This is Mr. Shakespeare here again with you on the 1st of November, 2022. I'm here with Liz Cross, psychic medium and remote viewer. How are you doing today, Liz? Great. Thank you. Okay. So I've had the idea to uh, take a look at Gematria, Gematria, Gematria. This is the practice of assigning a numerical value to a name, word or phrase. Um, there are lots of different ciphers. Ciphers have been used throughout history for all sorts of things. Um, one of the most famous ciphers used in the Second World War was the Enigma Code, which was you know, a form of this. Um, so can we, uh, can we grab Gematria or Gematria as an entity, please? Yes, of course. Okay. How's it doing today? It's doing okay. It's like, why are you probing me? <laughs> it's very suspicious. Okay. Well, how far back can we trace the roots of Gematria? How far back does this go? Uh, when lettering began. So as soon as lettering began, Gematria came out shortly afterwards? Yes. It will. At, at the moment of writing or creating the first alphabet, yes. Okay. And what was the purpose? Why did, why, why did it come out? I mean, what, what was its original purpose? Because this is interesting. Good pro, by the way. Because everything in the universe beyond humanity is a mathematical equation yep. okay yep. any idea any thought form all of that has a mathematical equation so anytime something comes down to us as humans we're creating an alphabet it's all born out of mathematical equations whether we know that consciously or not now Somewhere along the line, they received information probably through prophets that there were numbers attached to these letters. And everybody is constantly, you know, trying to decode the universe. Okay. And so, so what would you like to know? Okay. Well, one of the earliest scripts um, is the Francis Bacon script. I mean, he was around, you know, he was born in 1560-something. Um, and it's said that he invented the script to, to be able to talk in code to other people. I mean, is that... So is one of the purposes of Gematria to basically talk in code and then you have to be... And it has to then be decoded? no no it's to figure out the universe it's to decode and find spiritual meaning in the universe okay and i'm asking but is everything in the universe is it all guided by the same mathematical equation and that is a no Right. So, for example, uh, source never wants us to be able to decode because the more we decode the universe, the closer we are to source, right? Doesn't yeah. want us to decode. So, there are many. Uh, Gematria, uh, Gematrix sort of calculators. I've just pulled one up here. I put in the name Winston Churchill. You can see that it's 208, a reduction and reverse and reverse reduction. 
I mean, these are all central codes that, uh, I mean, this, this can then match other codes. Okay, but what does that number actually mean? Well, in English ordinal, so A is 1, B is 2, 3, C, and then so on. And then you add them together, and then that gives you the 208, which then reduces to 82. See, that's reverse reverse reduction. There are lots of um, different ciphers, and I'm trying to find one. This is not the one I wanted to use, actually. Um, but can we ask it while I look at that? Um, It says here in Wikipedia that it was employed by the ancient Babylonian uh, culture and their writing script was logographic and their numerical assignations, assignations were made to the whole words. Yeah. But I mean, they are, they are assigning numbers to words and people are always trying to decode these things. There's so much goes on and people read so much into this. Are you, is, is it saying that that's not the point of it? No. Uh. No. It's in order to understand how energy works, you would have to find all of the mathematical equations that dictate how the energy is divided amongst each one of us. And if you find <laughs> the, the, the winning the winning information, you can substantially enhance and change your life. Right. Okay, but can people use this to predict things? No. Oh. No, you're grasping at straws because... The calculations are moving all the time. So the universe is running on many calculations. And you can, what it's saying to me is those are changing every second. Sometimes it's right. Sometimes it's wrong. But no, it's not a surefire way to make predictions. I wouldn't even know how anyone would make a prediction. I'm sure there's a system out there. Well, there are many people out there that they believe they can tie lots of uh, things together by Gematrius because, you know, they look at the, the words and the numer the sort of how they add up to certain things and then they draw conclusions. You know, this word adds up to 46. Well, so does that word, that type of thing. So there's, and I'm, I'm oversimplifying it, but, you know, they're, they're using it as, a lot of people are using it as a, a dot joining tool i don't even know what that means <laughs> that's something that's like some trendy thing what what is a dot joining well if you you know if i saw three blue cars one after the other i might want to join the dots and go you know what blue cars are really popular i've done that in my mind because i've seen three blue cars you know well mm -hmm. they will take you know they will say that you know donald trump will be president next because his number adds up to this and then the president on that day, it's this. Do you see what I mean? They will draw conclusions. And I'm not saying, you know, that's one of them. Well, it is one of them. There are people who do say that. But they think they can foretell lots of things by joining the dots in Gematria. So they use the Gematria calculators and the different scripts, and there are many different ones. Uh, and then what they would do is they would, you know, draw parallels or say, well, these all add up to the number 27. So therefore, this will happen on that day because, you know, that's the universe telling me it's going to happen, that type of stuff, yeah? It's a bit more involved in that, but that's the simple version of it. But that's not accurate. What I'm getting is the only reason numbers should be attached to these letters, and I don't even feel, is it attached to English letters? Yes, it is. Um, it is. Because I was going to say, was it only attached to Hebrew letters? It's very strong with Hebrew letters, but it's to find spiritual meaning in the words. Right. It really isn't isn't for um, finding, you know, predictive information. It's really to bring you closer to God or source. 
Okay. So for instance, down here, uh, this 18 is a lucky number amongst the Jewish people. Well, I know that to be true because whenever you give a gift in the Jewish culture, it's usually in denominations of the number 18. So you write a check for $18 or you write a check for $36. You see what I mean? Yeah. Um, so you give gifts in that amount. That I didn't, <laughs> that's interesting. I didn't know why, but that makes sense to me. Right. Okay. Well, most people are trying to find the hidden. They're either trying to find the hidden meaning of most things by using Gematria mm -hmm. or they're trying to use Gematria as a predictive tool for, you know, not just financial, but, but all sorts of things. I mean, politics, everything. I mean, you name it. They, people believe you can use Gematria and it's based on the fact that everything is connected. Everything is numbers based. Everything is math based. So that's all, true. Uh, yeah. But all you've got to do is decode it. Um, I mean, the problem, the only thing I would say that I have about it is there are many, many different ciphers. So we have the Francis Bacon cipher. We have the English ordinal. We have the reverse ordinal. We have the Chaldean cycle, uh, cipher. There's lots of different ciphers i mean the francis bacon one is one of the oldest apparently okay but, but this but is what i say that the english ordinal one is the most accurate because english is the most spoken word in in this regard so i don't know I mean, go on. but letters are almost the bare minimum of how complex these calculations actually are in the universe and they're running there's many, many, many layers of calculations going on. And letters are at the base of it, right? So, so where we think we're trying to figure things out at this very basic level, you would have to be able to then move up to the next level and then the next level and then the next level. And you would have to be able to figure out a mathematical uh, a calculation or equation for the sun, the moon, because the planets are what is pushing and pulling. They have all this magnetic pull on the earth plane, right? So that is all mathematical equation. You're actually better off following astrology then you are this because lettering is at the very bottom of the totem pole with regards to figuring out and decoding the universe. If that makes sense. That's what I'm getting. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense. And you but... know, I know nothing about this stuff. <laughs> People ask me about it and I'm like, uh, kind of know, but now that we've actually probed the, um, the idea or, or the thought form itself, the gematria as a whole, as an entity, you're better off following astrological because that, that, that tells you more. That gives you some idea what, what the emotions are going to be on the earth plane and how people are going to react. Mm. But you'll never figure it all out ever in a million years because sources made this so complex that the human brain is actually incapable of making those very, very big calculations, which are sitting right under the level of source. I mean, everything is a calculation when I'm, when holograms are being projected to me, that is a mathematical calculation. Now I never knew that. But that, that makes sense. In order for the image to appear in front of me, that's a mathematical calculation. Now, let me ask this question. When I'm actually doing a remote view, a mind probe, is that a mathematical calculation? Yes, because what I've always found astonishing is the fact that when I connect with somebody, and it could be on the other side of the world, what speed are we moving at, right? Because it's instant. So that's a mathematical calculation. It has to be for it to be absolutely instant. And, and what is so interesting about that 
is the answer is often said long before or it hits me before I can even verbalize it. So whatever speed this is going, it's faster than the speed of, of speech. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's always fascinating me. Yeah, because you have probed things that, I mean, and the, 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 the speed of the response is out of this world, isn't it, in a way? It is. Is it faster than the speed of light? No, it's not faster than the speed of light, though. Faster though. than the speed of sound. Yes. There you go. How fast is, this, is the speed of sound? Isn't it about 700 and something miles an hour? I have no idea. But it has to be much faster than that. Because when I'm probing someone in China, which is God knows how many thousands of miles away, the answer is faster than I can actually say it. Mm. Yeah, it's about 760 miles an hour. So, and, that, and that becomes Mac. That becomes a Mac. Mac 1 is that. So Mac... You know, it's twice the speed of sound. Mach 3 is three times the speed of sound. This is a max speed of in the hundreds. Wow. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> that's how fast this is. Um, it's interesting, isn't it? And that's a mathematical equation. Humans will never be able to operate on that level, ever. They can try. They can... They have tried for many years and they will continue to try for many, many years. They will never have all the answers. The God particle, which is within all of us, right? The God particle, the God portion. You can't even mathematically break DNA down to its simplest form ever. Because source doesn't want you to be anywhere close. Only close in your heart. But physically and consciousness, you cannot be at that level. Or then what's the point? Well, there's a whole, there are a lot of people that, you know, um, and this is, this is not a recent phenomenon. This has been going on since time and memorial. There's always been people that say, um, you know, use this, do that, and we can tell the future. I mean, just numer. Uh, sorry, a uh, gametria is just one of them. What about numerology? I mean, that's the study of numbers, but uh, it's a t you know, it's just numbers for numbers' sake, in a way, isn't it? So, yeah, but numbers are far more complex than letters. Yeah. Wow. So numerology is probably a step up, um, but it's not absolute. Nothing is absolute, they're saying, because if it was absolute, then we would be at the level of source and we are never allowed to be at that level. No, well, that makes sense. Okay, all right. Um, I, think, uh, I think that's all we can ask for. Because a lot of the questions I had has has, or, has been kiboshed because of <laughs> yeah that happens sometimes. I know people it, like because for of us the answer you've come back with it, it now it makes them all mute. I'm afraid. So it's been it's it's good, but let's we'll stop this one here. Okay, excellent. If you do have any questions, then please drop a line on the YouTube comments. I actually do read them from time to time. Uh, of course, if you want to interact with Mr. Shakespeare in depth on that level, you need to join the Patreon at Remote Viewing and Beyond. Guys, censorship is real. We just all have to be, you know, open to that idea that it could and may happen at any point in time. YouTube can change their guidelines whenever they want to, and we can all get shut down. Anybody. That goes across the board. So make sure you're signed up to that newsletter at psychiclizcross.com. I'm not going to spam you. I, like I said, I don't even know how to work MailChimp yet. So don't even worry about that. But you will always know where to find us. Thank you very much.